ladies and gentlemen, this is Hans Romerator coming at you with another episode of Instant Noodle Recipe Time, the show where I show you what to do with your Instant Noodle. Blah, 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 And today I've got something from Hong Kong. This is Sao Tao, made by Sun Shun Fuk. And this is their Tom Yum Sliced Noodle. This came as part of the 400 pound pallet of samples that they sent back in March. And so I'm gonna cook some of this up today. They've got a Tom Yum and they've got a Laksa and they're just absolutely fan. Yes, mom will come home today. Hi, Miles. The children are accosting me and not only that, we also have Matt Bella, famous author on the phone. How's it going? Matt? Okay. How you doing? Fantastic, sir. I am currently making eggnog cheesecake cupcakes with graham cracker crust and cranberry topping. Cranberry? Yep. Wait. Go, 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 go. Too noisy. Too noisy. Run away. Run away. There's sandwiches over there. Go get your sandwich. <laughs> Mimi is not a fan of sandwiches. So you had a topic that you wanted to bring up for our friends watching. Oh, well, that was just a joke, uh, just to let you know I was back from the store. Well, here I'll uh, I'll let the people know. So here's the noodle, by the way. But uh, so Matthew's writing a book that takes place in uh, far flung future. Is that outer space? Uh, yeah. Yeah, in space in the future <laughs> and uh, science fiction writer anyways he likes to try to make his, his uh, craft realistic like scientifically viable so and then there was a thing and then it exploded well no that's not gonna work in his his world he has to actually have stuff that would be a little bit more finite well why don't you tell the people what you've been trying to get information on lately? Um, how to stop, sabotage a fusion reactor, either model, either the magnetic confinement model or um, the uh, inertial confinement model. Uh, I had something planned, a spectacular scene that I had in mind. Started researching the physics and initially convinced it wasn't possible. Had a flash of inspiration, some new some new uh, information comes to light and then that really turned it around for me and now I'm back to ground zero and starting to scratch because I found out that all of that is not viable physics. I'm also, uh, along with that, I have been researching the mining, chemical refinement, and enrichment process of uranium into weapons grade material. Because that has these primitive aliens like sort of learning science from us and then using it against us. And mm -hmm. uh, well, I have been doing it since I now know a lot about fusion reactors and I, and I, pretty much every step of the process needed to dig uranium out of the ground and turn it into weapons grade material. So that is now useless knowledge in my head. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but I did my homework and no one can say I didn't. <sighs> Well, I thought it was funny because when you, you said you like emailed 20 physicists about how do you how do you make weapons grade uranium or something like that. It's like, you know, I think when you do that, there's a list somewhere somebody keeps and goes, uh, that guy's looking up weird crap. Maybe we should like pay him a visit. Maybe you won't make it over for Christmas. You'll be in a, in a holding pen. It's like. So who are you really working for? <laughs> uh, an author. Uh-huh. I think I saw that movie, buddy. Uh, yeah, um, I'm definitely, I, I do, so, I definitely have been typing some strange things into Google lately, performing very odd YouTube, ser uh, Google searches, internet searches. I actually watched a guy make yellow case uranium in his basement. Um, uh, and, and, I, I do include a uh, disclaimer at the top of my my correspondence that says, look, I know this stuff sounds crazy. This stuff is hard to find out for a reason. 
but I'm just a writer who refuses refuses to fudge the number or so. You know, and then one guy did respond, he's like, he's getting into getting into turning the yellow cake into uranium hexafluoride. That's something I could tell you, but then people would come for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not supposed to give out that information to people I don't know. But it's like on Wikipedia, it says basically how to do it. I don't even know what it looks like, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. You don't want to make a, you don't want to make Star Wars. You want to make Star Trek. Right? Is that oh, what it really comes oh, down absolutely. to? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I want to make Star Wars with real physics. Like, eventually. That's the next book I want to write. Yeah. I mean, basically, Star Wars with real physics. I mean, I have so many good ideas for that. It'll be fantastic. And, and real science is cooler than fake science, but, you know? Yeah. Space. Yep. Now it's time for our quote of the day from Momo Fugurando Speaks, the book of quotes by the guy who invented instant noodles. Speaking of Star Trek, uh, if you know of Star Trek, it's like a Ferengi rules of acquisition by the guy who invented instant noodles. Um, number 133, the higher you climb up the ladder, the more alone you f- Wow. Okay, hold on, hold on. Number 133, the higher you climb up the ladder, the more alone you feel. Problems lash out at you in waves. And you have to make all decisions on your own. That was like... It's like I've made the decision I will not strangle my daughter. <laughs> but... You know, Mama Kugel Anderson was like a man I'd work for. I'd be happy to work for. Man of integrity and compassion. Yeah, he's the CEO. All right. God, I tell you, this 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 uh, Tom Yum. They put it with all sorts of different noodles, and it's just a freaking bomb. It's so good. Right? Yeah. It's it's really really good Tom Yum. Here's how it looks. Um, I don't believe you can see it. Uh, no, I can't. What I'm looking at right now is melting cream cheese. Nice. Yeah. It's funny, Mimi will be like, like, uh, Kit will be talking to somebody on the phone, like, uh, Mimi's grandma, and she'll be like, look, grandma, see, see, my doll is pink. It's like, um, actually, the world doesn't work that way. <laughs> Technology's not that good. Yeah. Not yet, at least. Christian will always be a better brain. You're always mad. Yeah. Yeah. That's the cyberpunk future. Hey, which oh, yeah. day is it? I don't know, but I know now. Totally. Yeah, I know. But... Oh my god, they're just making so much noise. You know what I want to talk about is Mediterranean noodle popping. Is there anything like that? Is there any kind of recipe that has, like, you know, olives, those green, those Greek olives and maybe like some falafel balls with it, or what would be a couture that would accompany uh, Mediterranean ramen? Because like in China, go. so you try to make noodles and you try to make ramen into a meal, right? Put some meat in there, the eggs, you know, a little thing, tofu puffs. I'm a vegetarian, so I'm trying to find something hearty, but I do enjoy Mediterranean food as well. So, uh, you know, I'm thinking like falafel balls instead of tofu puffs and possibly some olives in there or something. What do you think? You could. Um, I think maybe you'd want to look into something like uh, Maggie uh, Masala. Right, in India. Would be a I mean, it was, what? Well, I think most flavors, ramen flavors would conflict with like a full awful or an all. And, right, but Maggie uh, Masala, it's Masala. I mean, Indian food and right. falafel, that would work. Um, there's all sorts yeah. of different kind of Indian ones, so I think that would probably be a good place to start off. Um, there's a Pakistani brand called Sh- uh, Shan Shoop. Huh. And I think huh. that might work too. There's some, uh, like, a lot of lemony 
kind of aspects to it, and I could see that working well. Alright. Falafel's good, though, and the, the thing is, if you were going to do it with a noodle, you wouldn't want to do it with a soup noodle, because I don't know how the, the moisture would work in that situation. Uh -huh. But everything's worth a try once, especially when you're dealing with ingredients that cost uh, five for a dollar. So. Yeah, everything is worth a try once. I had somebody the other day going, well, you know, ramen isn't like ten for a buck anymore. I'm like, no, it's four for a buck. What's your point? <laughs> it's like, technically, I believe it's actually cheaper than it used to be, but whatever, you can... I've had so many, that's one of my favorite questions. Will I like this? It's like people want to go out and get some, get some things. It's like, I don't know. Why don't you shell out the 33 cents it's going to cost you, and maybe you can find out yourself. I don't think you're, if you're really in that dire of straits, you shouldn't be online uh, looking into, like, what instant noodles to get. Maybe you should be looking into, like, your lifestyle and how it can change better yourself other than your worry about spending 33 cents on noodles. I don't know. But hey, different strokes for different folks, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Alright, so I added a bunch of junk to this. Let me put this up. You up for one last episode? He says yes. He's up for another episode. So, yeah, we're going to let Rotato go, and we'll be right back. All right, awesome Tom Yum from Hong Kong there. The next one you'll see is going to be this Top Ramen Soy Sauce Bowl. So stay tuned, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. You know you want them. This has been Hans the Ramen Raider wishing you enjoyment of your noodles each and every day. Have a good one. Bye.